I played a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of games this year. I played a lot of new games. I played a lot of classics. I played a game called Dragon's Dungeon. So you better believe me that every game on this list is good as hell, all right? For the sake of variety, I've excluded games I already reviewed. I've given bonus points to games that actually came out this year. And I've also excluded Super Mario Bros. 2, which is one game of the year, 13 years running now. No Mario Bros. 2 this year, okay, guys? I promise, no Mario Bros. Number 10, let's get it started. Super Mario Maker. Super Mario Maker. When I first saw the Wii U gamepad, I thought to myself, well, this is just the biggest, bulkiest piece of shit idea I've ever seen in my life. Then I saw the trailer for Mario Maker, and I was like, oh, that's Mario Little Big Planet. That'll be mediocre. But combine these two dumbass ideas, and you have a video game dream team on your hands. In fact, the only reason I've put this as number 10 on my list was because I couldn't wait any longer to tell you how good this game is. Sure, there been attempts of giving the player tools to make their own game, but they've all been pretty inaccessible until this point. Making levels with the gamepad is the easiest thing in the world. My favorite so far is a remake of Bob Bomb Battlefield from Mario 64. You got that chain chomp with the little star, the bombs fall on you. Look at the king. His crown is the little guy. <laughs> It's not just a gimmick showcase though, there's some real platforming and some fresh ideas that makes this level incredible. Of course, most levels are not this good. That's the problem. Nintendo does not get online. Nintendo's the kind of guy still using Internet Explorer, you know what I'm saying? This, they're still over there using Ask Jeeves. You can't search for levels by names. Instead, you have to put in the exact 12-digit Nintendo code, which is complete shit town 3000. Finding a great level is a monumental task because there is just an endless ocean of garbage, unfinished, dog shit, terrible levels to sift through. But every once in a while, you find that one special level that makes it all worth it. Ah, masterpiece. <laughs> Duck game. Mass Effect 2 is one of my favorite RPGs because it's barely an RPG. It has a strong narrative, a lot of likable characters, but mostly you just shoot the shit out of robots. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? Get over here. You command your squad around while you're lining up headshots. You got that push move and throw them up in the air and start shooting them in the air. Oh. The bad guy is pretty lame compared to the dude from Mass Effect 1, but you do have Martin Sheen is the elusive man. Morden Salas, one of the coolest guys ever. You got that badass synth heavy soundtrack. And that, that whoosh move. Ooh, I love that whoosh move. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Every time Hearthstone comes out with a new expansion, I end up playing it for another three months. And now that you can play it on iPads, on your phone, it's the perfect travel game. People say to me, but don't. Hearthstone is pay to win, which is only half true. Some of the classes like Warrior and Druid do require all the rarest, most expensive cards ever. But then you have Warlocks and Hunters who can build really competitive decks out of nothing but commons and cheap old cards that you can earn for free. I feel like Blizzard strikes a nice balance between strategy and blind luck to make for an addictive, highly replayable time killer where you can collect all your favorite Warcraft characters such as Homing Chicken and the Owl from Warcraft. I beat this game on an airplane, and you gotta understand that I hate fucking airplanes. It's a stupid little claustrophobic submarine with wings, and you gotta sit there in some cramped little seat that hurts your ass for three hours. You need an escape. So I pull out Game Boy. Woom. I'm not in the airplane anymore. I'm in Donkey Kong World. Thank you. It's just jam-packed with variety and challenge. Oh, it gets hard. It'll piss you off. You'll start calling Donkey Kong words that I will not repeat at this time, but the difficulty is legitimate. I feel like Dark Souls great game, but it will often blur the line between actual real difficulty and random bullshit you can't do anything about. In Donkey Kong Returns, your hurdles are very clearly telegraphed and fair, and yet it still whoops your ass. That is the defining trait of a truly fucked up ass game. It took me a while, but eventually I said, you know what Donkey Kong, fuck you! Beat the shit out of this game, got out of my seat, walked up to the pilot, said thanks for the airplane, dickhead, punched him out the window, and then they lost my luggage. 
We are living in a golden age of gaming. There are so many classic titles being resurrected by dedicated fans. Last year, Brutal Doom blew me away, and now you can play Super Smash Bros. Melee online on your computer. Let's just take a moment and applaud these guys for giving us this ancient treasure. Thank you guys. You are amazing. Melee is the fastest, most apeshit fighting game on planet Earth. When you kill a guy in Melee, you kill him into the moon, okay? He's not coming back. He's Moon Man now. There's all these advanced techniques that I'll never use. There's an enormous roster of characters. There's tingle kills. You don't even have to dick around with setting your IP and port forwarding. You can just hop in there, copy and paste a little code. Bing bang bitch. Counterman is one of the oldest, most respected shooters out there. It's also a game where if you think somebody's hacking, they probably are. There's a huge potential for the individual to whoop ass in this game. The ball is in your court, and I don't care what anybody says. I love the community for this game. Hands down, my favorite feature is the voice chat. Yo, somebody fucking help me. I'll help your mother get have another baby. What the fuck? Coming from League to Counter-Strike is like walking out of kindergarten into Vietnam. You're gonna get shot. The guy who killed you will take your gun and shoot you with your own gun next round. You're gonna get called the N-word by a 10-year-old. But the beauty of it is, if that kid is on your team, you can just team kill him. <laughs> it's a masterpiece. Rocket League is one of those games where I forget shaking the controller doesn't make me jump higher. I get so involved when I play this game. I start yelling at the ball, the same stuff I was saying at Donkey Kong. I'm not going to repeat it here, but just know that the ball was being a little bitch at the time. What I love about Rocket League is everyone sucks ass at it. Teammates are just constantly ramming into each other like morons, knocking the ball into their own goal. The game is too advanced for our baboon minds to comprehend very rarely. Well, someone actually pull off something good, but when you do, it feels incredible. I've played a lot of RPGs over the years, about three of those were good. Undertale joins that small group, it does this bizarre thing where you actually like the characters and you don't want them all to die in a car fire, well actually that one guy I wanted, I really wanted to kill him, but the rest were on accident. It challenges all of the fundamental elements of the genre by being a simple little game. There's no repetitive grinding, no corny melodramatic dialogue, it's so concise, and yet it says more in 5 hours than most games do in 70. It's a huge breath of fresh air and one of the funniest games I've ever played. There's a lot of dog humor, you have your bone jokes, you have your snail jokes, all of the comedy bases are covered. It also packs this massive 100 song soundtrack. The music of Undertale is the crowning achievement, there's an absurd amount of diverse quality melodies. They all instill this sense of immersion and authenticity to the world and the key events of the game. Undertale is an emotional roller coaster, and these are the tracks. I gotta be honest, my favorite game this year was Metal Gear Solid 5. It was not the game I was expecting, but I loved it anyway. The story sucks, but for the first time in this series, that isn't a big deal. This is not a movie game hybrid like the others. This is a straight up video game. Phantom Pain offers up this enormous sandbox with every imaginable tool at your disposal. I've never seen a game give the player this much freedom and control of how they want to approach it. You can impersonate a woman, you can shoot your hand off, you can rescue animals and make a zoo, you can plant C4 on a dude's butt, wait for him to get in a helicopter and blow it out of the air. You can do this. Out of all the spectacular games on my list this year, Metal Gear 5 is the only one that feels like a true next gen experience. Steam says I've already put 150 hours into this game and I have a strong feeling 
that when the online launches for the PC version later this month, I'm gonna put in a whole lot more. Now go! Let the legend come back to life. Game of the year goes to Super Ooh, Mario Brothers Super 2. Mario Super Mario Brothers 2, you bitch. Super Mario Brothers 2. 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 Super Mario Broth